You guys know the drill. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the shop. I uh, just this morning was at Straw Town again and didn't take any video simply because um, I don't know that there was a whole lot of new stuff there. In fact, I was kind of disappointed in the number of vendors that were there. There weren't very many people that had showed up, um, but there were a few, but I did find some really neat tools. And so I'm bringing you down here on the bench and check those out. But before I do that, I want to do a shout out to you, one of you, the viewers. Um, David was there, and David was from northern Indiana, or he is from northern Indiana, and he has family down in Indianapolis, and he saw me, recognized me, said hi. Thank you so much, David, for making yourself known. It was great to be able to talk to you. I enjoy corresponding and meeting some of the viewers from the channel. So let's get down to the content of the channel and let's take a look at these tools that I found. So while I was at the flea market, these are some of the things I found. Uh, Lord knows I don't need any more scrapers, but they were four for a dollar. So I snatched them up. This one here is a good quality one. I think it's actually Red Devil made in the USA. Bolsters missing, but um, still usable. These other two here, are, these are both plastic handles. I can't make them out what they are, but this one here um, looks like it's well made. I just can't see what it says there on them. But um, couldn't pass that up, so I went ahead and grabbed those. It wasn't a huge find or anything. Then I also found this one here, which is great, and I'm going to do a separate video on that, and we'll clean that up separately. But today, I want to look at this little sweetheart right here it's a cruiser axe and i have one cruiser axe that i'll show you here in just a minute but i've been wanting to get another one and i saw this at the flea market the guy made me a good deal on it i don't really want to change it a whole lot i just want to clean it up get some of the rust off of it and get um, some protectant on it and sand the handle lightly get a coat of linseed oil on it because i really want to keep it just the way it is but i thought i'd bring you along as we get that put together and we'll get it displayed up on the wall Here is our axe all nice and finished up. These things are just magnificent. These are very specialized type tool. You don't find a whole lot of them around, at least not in my experience. And when you do find them, they tend to be kind of expensive. 
Now this one here, I think I felt, I felt like I got it for a decent price. I don't know if it was because of the make. It's still a quality, a very good quality tool. Now I want to show you my other, my other cruiser axe here. I do have one, but the problem was a guy gave it to me, a friend of mine gave it to me, and you'll see that the bits are different. That's because there was a large chip out of this bit over here in the bottom. And so I ground that down to get rid of that chip. And it changed the dimensions. I suppose I should have done them both the same, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And I didn't want to... Anyways, I've been wanting to get another, another cruiser axe. And this one here is the one that I had. Now you'll notice here how this swells out on this handle and that's what I normally would want to see but you can see on this one how it doesn't do that now I don't know if this is an original handle I have my suspicions that it's not and yet I'll show you here on eBay I found one that is done very similarly and it's also a master mechanic you can see it here so I don't know if this is the way that master mechanic did it but um, it's still nice and straight, and it's very well hung. Um, I would like for it to be filled in on both sides, but since it's mostly a collector's, I'm not going to collector's item. I'm not going to try to change any of that, and I really do like the size of the handle and the feel of the handle. The older handles were nice and slim. They were expected to be comfortable in the hand. They weren't expected to be brutish. They were expected to be slim and ready to use. There's a little bit of a palm swell down here so that you've got something to fill your hand with. But um, I really like the way this has turned out and I like this little tool. Now there's something here I also want to show you. On a cruiser axe, the bits are not, are not ground in the same manner and I want to show you what I mean. Here we have an, an edge, a grind chart and you can see how this fits on here. That's too wide. So it's not a 25, it is a 20. And you see how nice and tight that is. So that's a much sharper grind than this side over here which is a 25. And you can see how it won't fit in the 20. It doesn't go all the way down in there. So this is a 25. And the reason they did that is because this side here is more of a grubbing tool. It's to be used down closer to the ground and around roots. This side here is to be used in the meat of the tree and is never to come in contact with the um, ground or the root system. And so you can tell by the stamp on there, if I'm gonna be cutting close to the ground, I don't wanna see that stamp. And you know this side here is your grubbing side to get down closer into the roots. If you're going to be cutting into the tree and you're not in danger of hitting the ground, then you flip it over so you can see that, and now you know that you've got that side of the bit. All right. For some comparison purposes, here is my plum. That's four and a half pound axe, and here is the the Master Mechanics double bit. This one here I did not take off, so I don't know the exact weight of it, but it is considerably smaller than the big double bit. Now these double bit axes basically were the had the advantage of having two axes in one so a man could a lumberjack could sharpen his axe in at, at camp and then when he went to work he basically had two axes in one when one began to get dull just had to flip it over both grinds are generally the same on these large large axes now that is contrary as i showed you on the cruiser axe where they have the two different sides. The cruiser was, I don't know if it was a foreman or who it was, but it was somebody 
who went into the woods ahead of the crew and he needed to have an ax to be able to mark trees whether they're blazing a trail for a road to come into an area of trees or a part of the forest if they're going in for select cut to be able to choose the trees that they're going to to drop they would come in with one of these little cruisers it was a lot lighter easier to carry and yet very very useful sometimes you'd have to cut into the underbrush to get to a large tree and so that's where as i explained before this broader bit came in you could be able to cut branches and and get in there and use that and then if you when you're ready to mark the tree or if you came across a knot you would use this more blunt edge so that you didn't have to dull your nice sharp edge and then when you had good meat of the tree to cut you would flip it over and use this other edge so the cruiser went in to they're also called saddle axes and so way back when you go in on horseback this would be something that you'd be able to carry with you of course they had a mask that covered both edges to keep it from cutting anybody and then when they were ready to go into the woods they'd usually go in on foot and they would carry their axe so these are not mass produced anymore they were a very specialized tool that was needed at a time when you did go in on foot or on horseback to be able to get into the woods and this is what they usually carried with them when they did that <clears throat> so now you can't find these very often when you do they generally are rather expensive um, you can get anywhere from two to uh, five six hundred dollars depending on the brand that you're looking at for these cruiser axes cruiser axe generally is this double bit it's got a little bit smaller eye and it has generally that straight handle so i am very pleased to have acquired this little cruiser and we are going to take and put it in its place here on the wall so much fun to add to the collection and be able to demonstrate and show the different tools um, sitting in somebody's garage at one point probably in a corner um, to be discovered and then put out there in the flea market and I sure am glad to be able to have access to them So thanks so much for joining me on this video. If this was entertaining, please click the thumbs up uh, If you have some friends that you think might enjoy this content Share this link with them. I appreciate that and if you're not subscribed We're always looking for more viewers and subscribers So hit that subscribe button and we'd love to have you come back again soon have a great day. God bless.